Hi there, thanks for joining me. I'm Shane. And we're continuing a series here of videos where we're working on my uncle's David Brown 990. Uh, if you're new here, the tractor, when it's cranked, the hydraulic arms will go straight to the top and stay there. They will not go down. And in the last video, in the end of the last video, we successfully diagnosed that. This is the hydraulic valve chest right here, and it was stuck. And so go watch the end of that, end of that video if you're interested to see how I got the spool valve unstuck. But today, in this video, we're going to be talking about how to remove the valve chest from this right-hand ramshaft bracket and remove all the components out of there. You can see them laying right there. Uh, the problem with this is that the lever on top here that selects between height control, depth control, or traction control modes for the hydraulic system, that lever was seized up and we've removed all the components out of there to clean them up. So if you want to see all how this came apart and how all of this came out, stay with me. First thing we're going to do is remove the valve chest from the casting here. But before I do that, I'm going to take this rate of lowering valve out of here just so I don't potentially break it. Let's examine that real quick. Ooh, that's bent. To disassemble valve chest from casting, there are three areas you got to take off. Nut here, nut here, and then there's a nut on the inside as well. We'll start from the inside. The inside bolt for the valve chest lives right there. A lot of times this can be covered in grease. This to be a half inch bolt. It wasn't tight at all. There's that bolt and the washer. Bolt under here. It's actually a stud, I think, in the housing. nut and a washer, nut and washer. That's a lock washer. Both of these are lock washers, not washers. All right, the valve chest should be free at this point. And it is. We got to lift it straight up and off, I think. And this is the very first time I'm ever doing this part. I've never actually removed the valve chest from the casting before. Yep, there it comes. And there is the heart of a selectomatic hydraulic system right there in my hands. Interesting. Okay, that is worth its weight in gold, I think. And now we can see inside. I don't see anything jumping out at me quite yet. This, is, this shaft is supposed to slide left and right. Uh, we <laughs> rewatched uh, Barry's video on Man in Front of the Mist on his reassembly of all of this just a few minutes ago. I'll link that up there. All right, first step in taking this all apart, I think, will be to take this off the old broken selector switch. Yep, there it went. And simply held in there with a roll pin. Just a roll pin. It's the broken one, it's plastic. Then those are Phillips. What's the chances that those screws are rusted in place? Hmm. That one came loose, easy. And that one, good, good, good. And this should come off. There's a little foam piece in there. 
It doesn't look like it's rotten. All right, let's just do some examination here. We've got a plastic fork. I've not seen that before. That operates pretty well. That operates pretty well. That is stuck though. This shaft right here is supposed to slide back and forth. It goes on into the housing here and it slides on through There's actually a hole right here that it actually comes out of. There's another hole over here on this side. I need to clean that up some, some more. Um, I think there's a blanking plug over here on this side. I don't think that's the shaft. I'm going to take off this bolt over here, or this uh, blanking plug, and see if I can't get it to move some. This thing is just nasty. I think I can see a slot right there. Oh, look at there. There is a cap screw right there. It's just covered in crap. All right, I need to clean this up around there first. I've got both these sides fairly well cleaned off. At least you can see that there's a screw there. I did spray it with a little uh, penetrating fluid and let it sit for a little bit. <clears throat> okay, yeah, that's, that's loose. Do notice that there's a bit of rust in right in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let this sit overnight. With a bunch of penetrating fluid down in it. And we'll see what happens. And we'll come back and I'm gonna try to use a punch to kind of tap it down to see if I can get any movement. It's in height control right now. The, the lever here was under light height control under in the tractor. So there should be enough room for it to go down into TCU or depth control, whichever one is that way. Let's see if we can't get this thing to move a little bit. Oh, moly, it's moving. <laughs> Look at all the rust right in there. If you can see it. Huh. That thing was seized up solid. And somebody, it wasn't me, I don't think, broke that hammer and they tried to get it to free up. And all it took was a little bit of penetrating fluid. Let's test it and see. Let's test it and see. <laughs> well, I am now questioning myself on whether I need to disassemble this or not. It was just seized up with a little bit of rust right in here on this side, apparently. Wow, that penetrating fluid did its job. All right, the linchpin that keeps this all together and working in unison seems to be the fork. So I think I'm going to take it out. There was really no way I could have done that with it stuck the way it was. This is just the punch wouldn't be straight going in. With it being unstuck, I now have clearance over here to go in straight and even pick it up some to um, try to avoid the casting underneath here. It's just nuts and bolts and a uh, roll pin. All right, that just dropped down. I should pick it up and see it right there. 
there's a blanking plug right here, right? I can't push from that direction to get it go out. So I'm going to just do some investigation here now that that's removed. Probably a better way to do this. I just don't know it. All right, I made progress. <clears throat> All right, basically what I did was I put this pair of vice grips on here. And I'm just tapping it over. And you can see it's protruding right here on the end now. Well, my, why am I doing this when it was working? I don't know. Well, yeah, I do. Number one, it's just nuts and bolts. Two, I want experience taking this apart. And three, this was rusted. It was rusted in place. I need to dress it up so it doesn't happen again. There we go. Now we got some. Now we got it. <clears throat> That's out. From what I understand, this is supposed to go in at the bottom. It's a flat spot. But this is also flat over here, and you can see it inside the casting. So as you insert it, if that flat is on top, you can rotate it to be on the bottom. And I've got to, I buggered it up right there with the vice grip, so it was too tight. <clears throat> That's okay though, I can buff that out, I think. Now this side has got a screw on it. You're supposed to be able to go in from this side over here and be able to turn it, which means that this is a blanking cap, which I'm gonna try to remove at this point and see if that's actually possible. Hmm, that punch is not long enough. I may have to use two punches. Well, I gotta go find that now. Okay, the spring is still in there. That's good. The ball went flying. I did find it though. There's the ball. Set it right there for safekeeping. And that cover plate went over here somewhere. Yep, I found it right where it's, I thought it might be. Good. So that's just a little blanking plate that you can punch out. It's not, <laughs> it's not in there very tightly <laughs> at all. <laughs> all right, spring is still in there. Let's see if we can't fish that out. I got an idea. Yeah, that's working. Let's let gravity help us out a little bit here. I know you probably can't see what I'm doing, but that's okay. You'll see it as it comes out. There we go. And there's the little spring. And this hole right here lives a spring and a ball that sits on top of it, just like that. Don't lose those. Okay, now let's see if we can get this fork out of here. <laughs> Without breaking it. There we go. All right, before I do anything though, I'm going to mark this with an F for front. So I know where it goes. And there's that fork. First time I've seen this in plastic. This is a mid seventies model case, David Brown. Uh, it's after case had uh, bought them, I guess. And so I guess they were looking for areas to save money. 
Okay, now that that's out of there, this lever should come right out, just like that. And there's a screw right here, keeping this, uh, that the lever, that that fulcrum lever rides on. Uh, there's a screw that keeps that down in there, I guess. That wasn't tight. You've got that screw. kind of a, a hole over here on this side. This is kind of a, this ear on the casting, there's a hole that lets this slip out, slip over there to be able to remove it. And when it's in the, in its hole there, that screw comes down and locks this in place. We've got a circlet there. Oh, come on, get in there. I don't have the right size, I don't guess. I, I'm not taking that apart. There's no reason for me to take that apart. That works fine. If you've got the right size pliers, you can get in there. There's a circle up right here if you want to disassemble that. I have no need to take that apart, so I'm not. We'll call this partial disassembly. Take the punch out up there, and this should slide. Should slide out. There we go. All the parts are straight, nothing's bent. It was just seized up. It needs a lot of uh, cleanup and some grease is what needs to be done for the mechanism for the selector lever. These are studs that can that screw down in here. I'm not taking those out. Now that this casting is empty, I'm gonna take it and pressure wash it and get it all cleaned up. All right, I think I'm done with this video. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate uh, all of you that watch these videos. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, like this so that the algorithm will pick it up and show it to more people. So yeah, just go down below and hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed and hit the like button if you like it. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day.